And now our next speaker is Ana Alonso Serrano. And to tell you a little bit about Ana, she's a theoretical physicist and her research has been mainly focused on understanding quantum effects on gravity. She's gonna talk about uh, black holes and what do we know and what we still don't know. So Ana, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so then the floor is yours. Thanks a lot for the introduction and thanks, thanks all of you to join this first online event. So I'm going to share some slides. Okay, now you can see, I guess. So, <clears throat> so black holes, black holes nowadays are in our imaginary. We know about them uh, in scientific, uh, uh, science fiction movies and books, uh, and also in some, uh, I don't know how to say, some expressions in our daily life. And, and in the last years, they are also very present in the scientific news. They have uh, got two Nobel prizes, but the point is that what are black holes and what do we know about them? So I'm going to try to give a brief uh, introduction to, to this. So uh, the first is like, okay, what do we know? So what you see in the left, don't be super scared about this math representation, but because uh, only the people that is expert and working on, on this field, I think can understand it. And I put it because it's the representation of black holes made in theory. And why I put it? Because black holes have um, uh, some, something very interesting compared to the most of the scientific discoveries in the past century is, that they were predicted by the theory much, much earlier than we went to the observations. They were predicted in the theory of general relativity. And this theory started in the 1915 and black holes were uh, first sign or the first clues about black holes were a few months after uh, the first uh, article, scientific article of this uh, theory. And what is in the left, as I said, that this is not important to understand at all, is something scary. But what is uh, interesting is like, it took more than a century to go for the mathematical representation in the left that we work in, in our job in theoretical physics to the picture in the right. That the picture in the right is the first picture of a black hole made by the Event Horizon Telescope in uh, 2019. Now they will say a little bit uh, about this picture later. So it's something that we have been studying for very long time. So what do we know? So as I said, they are predicted by the theory of general relativity. This theory is explaining gravity. It's explaining, to say in some uh, big words, it's explaining the nature of the universe, of the space and time. So for example, um, what is um, mainly saying is that we understand the universe, that the shape of the universe is affected by the matter that is in the universe. So if we understand, for example, the universe as a, a two-dimensional sheet, as I put here, like a sheet, the matter is uh, doing deformation in it. And these deformations in the universe are also telling to matter how to move, for example, here, you see in this picture how the deformation made by a body that can be our sun influence another star that is going around. So here is the point that the, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse. So the, the, the bodies that are, uh, let's say, um, have big weight, like for example, the sun, they create some deformation in the space time. If they are uh, bigger, they have, uh, in weight, they have a greater uh, deformation, like a white dwarf neutron star, but the biggest one is a black hole. That is the biggest deformation on this, of the space time. So uh, what, what we can see here that is a save that I want to uh, remark is that in the black hole, there is something that is called event horizon and is the place where if you go around like this uh, body that is around this star, you cannot escape, never. And black holes are called black because they are, this step is uh, so hard that neither light can escape. So in the moment that you cross 
some uh, line that is called the event horizon, you cannot come back. So um, what also we know uh, about this, we know how, as I said, uh, because of the theory, we know how matter behaves around uh, a black hole. We know how the, <clears throat> sorry, how the black holes swallow the matter and the stars that are surrounding them. <clears throat> and we know how is the process when they fall. They fall, I put it here. This is a star that is going close to the black hole and is stretching, it's called a, the process is spaghettification. So if you go to a black hole, you are spaghettifying <laughs> because of the difference in gravity. So we know how the matter behaves around the black hole, how they swallow matter and they grew with, uh, when they swallow that matter, they grew. We know uh, how they can be formed as the last stage of uh, some super big uh, stars. What else we can know right now? We know where to find them. Here you see, this was the Nobel Prize this year. This here, this point is the center of our uh, galaxy, the Milky Way, and it's called Sagittarius A. And in the center of our galaxy, there is a black hole. And this was found because of studying the orbits of the stars around the black hole. And also it was very interesting because this study was uh, carried independently by two different groups of scientists and they found the same results. And this was the Nobel Prize this year. So where we can find black holes, for example, in the center of our galaxy, there is a black hole. And in principle, in the galactic centers of, uh, uh, in general, we expect there are black holes. What else we can say nowadays about black holes? We know that uh, something that is our gravitational waves, that was something predicted by Einstein also in the 19th in the 20th century, and that took more than 100 years uh, to find. Because the black holes are not only swallow matter around, they also can merge if we have two black holes together. And as they are so uh, creating so big deformations in the shape of uh, the universe, they attract each other and they create like a dance one around each other. And then those deformations are traveling along the, along the universe and reach the uh, earth. And the, what I put before, and now I try to repeat here, you can see this is the um, wave that was found. So we can say that we listen to the black hole. Um, not only black holes, also other uh, objects uh, can uh, create these gravitational waves, but mainly uh, black hole. And what's the point? It's like, this is a new window to, to listen to our universe and to find uh, new things about black holes and also gives an idea where we can find other black holes. And something surprising is the abundance of them. When the experiment was carried out, they immediately found gravitational waves and they have found a lot of them. And the same, this is a uh, research project that was like working for a lot of years. And like in these um, discoveries, uh, a lot of groups of uh, scientists all around the world are working together and interpreting the results and finding them. So it's really uh, a collaboration across uh, all the borders. And now what we still don't know. And here I'm going to stop sharing the screen because uh, I cannot show any picture that is not mathematical because we don't know yet. So it's something that we are working from the from in theoretical physics and also um, in observational uh, physics, they are also working at the same time. And there are like a lot of things that we still don't know and we are working and it will take time, maybe we can find surprises. So for example, what, what, is, what are the main things that we don't understand? There are more, but this is what uh, I'm interested in and working. For example, we don't know what happens inside a black hole. As you remember, I said at the beginning, there is something that is called the event horizon. Then when you pass it, you cannot go back and neither light can escape. So we don't know what happens there when you cross it. You have, we have no idea what is uh, happening inside a black hole. And um, also another thing that I mentioned is like, I mentioned that the black holes can absorb swallow matter and stars and grew. But also there is a theoretical mechanism 
that they can evaporate. So one of the possible evolution apart from growing is to reducing and in the end evaporate, but we don't know. <laughs> we don't know if they can completely evaporate and how and what happens. And these two processes involve a lot of uh, theoretical studies because they have problems, for example, with the information because all the information that you throw to a black hole is in some way lost. And we are not sure uh, what happens there because we should be able to recover that information according to our uh, loss of, of physics. But so I think there is like, as I said, there were like 100 years uh, working on this and we had a lot of new results and a lot of people involved and still there are so many things to, to discover that it will take like a lot, so many years to, to have a complete idea of what they, they are. So that's all, thanks. Thanks a lot, Anna. Wow, it's amazing. I mean, every time I, I listen to you talking about black holes, it's like, Poof! So we have already a couple of questions for you here in the chat. So the first one by Flor says, um, you mentioned that there is a black hole in the center of our universe. Does that mean that we are falling into it? Hi, Flor. Uh, in, it's the black hole. One thing that I want to say uh, is like, there is no center of the universe. So I don't know if maybe I, I said wrong, but the, the, where is the black hole is in the center of our galaxy, in the center of the Milky Way. So yes, one good question that uh, a lot of people are working on that. I'm not expert on that because my field is completely different, is the dynamic of the galaxies. So it's not very easy to understand and it's not fully understand how is the dynamic of the galaxies. We are not falling into the black hole because uh, the, the black hole is only affecting the matter that is really close by. So it's not affecting the things that are very far away, but it's affecting on the dynamics of the galaxy, of course. It's like, like a very big object there that is affecting the shape of the universe, as I said. So it's affecting this move and this uh, dynamics, but it's not that we are falling into, into it. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah,